I hate you. This isn't one of those haunted game stories. At no point are you going to hear me claim something within the game spoke to me, reacted to my words, or forced me to punch myself repeatedly in the face. No, this isn't about a haunted game, or a game doing something impossible, or even something it shouldn't have. This isn't about a glitch or a hidden satanic message, and at no time did I phone Nintendo headquarters only to have my questions answered with hushed whispers or anguished screams. This story is about a game feature I don't think anyone else has unlocked. That's it. No ghosts, no conspiracies. Just a secret we were all supposed to find, but never did. Something that changes an entire generation's childhood and the very essence of a multi-million, billion dollar franchise. This is about what I assume to be a previously undiscovered alternate ending of Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo. In 1996, I received my first computer as a birthday gift. I'd been on the internet before, I'd used computers before, but it had always been in school or at a friend's house. This one was mine, all mine. I explored the crude prehistoric web of the time with great interest. I downloaded all sorts of pornography and even printed it out, which made absolutely no sense. I also pirated media like a madman, music, games, anything. This was where I first discovered Mario World. I never had a Super Nintendo as a little kid, so it was all new to me. I downloaded tons of games along with the SNES emulator, but Mario World was my favorite. For over a decade, the same Mario World ROM was my time-wasting hobby. I played it over and over again, beating the game faster and faster until I began to lazily explore the worlds with no particular purpose. Game Genie codes helped immensely. I could turn off the timer and relive a particularly entertaining map for an hour as I waited for a download of, or any number of boring events. It was in this manner that I must have beaten and rebeaten the game thousands upon thousands of times. Thousands? There was comfort in the obsessive compulsive behavior of this routine, but all of that was shattered when I saw the blind boo. <laughs> the blind boo, as I referred to it, was hovering over the exit from the haunted sunken ship level later on in the game. I call it blind because it actually had no visible eyes. It was like someone had made a lazy ROM hack. But I knew from years upon years of experience that this was a normal game. The blind boo just hung there over the exit pipe, blocking it. I turned my back on it, but it didn't chase me. How could it? It didn't even see me. Then I noticed something else out of sorts. There's the blind boo. There is a key and keyhole misplaced above the exit. Keys and keyholes are as such, are ways of ending a level in an alternate manner and discovering a secret area. Still, this didn't belong there, and I knew it. For a moment, I considered the fact that I'd actually broken a ROM file from overuse. After, ta after taking... Sorry, I'll stop laughing. After taking a screenshot specifically to show all of you Mario Brothers fans out there, I picked up the key and opened the door, figuring the game would seize up and I'd have to restart. Instead... It opened up a new path on the map selection screen. Wow. A whirlpool next to Bowser's already creepy head cave thing. I pressed the right arrow and moved onto the whirling drain. Oh God, no. This didn't really strike me as odd, because if you're familiar with the Mario World game, there's an area called Star Road that you may note has a similar name. Or similar names. It's just stuff like tubular and awesome, all manner of dumb words and phrases. Most of the areas were called Vanilla Forest 1 and Donut Mountain 3 and all that. But there were maps with odd names like that. What did concern me, though, was Mario's expression. Surprise. Shock. Fear. I entered the map. Oddly enough, the whirlpool in the middle of the lake began with a standard castle entry animation. Mario walked up to the castle door, looked up, and went in. I could tell it was underwater, though, because the bubbles that periodically emerged from the sprite's mouth floated to the top of the screen. 
Inside the castle, it started to look more and more like I was, in fact, experiencing a glitch. There was no room to jump, no room to do anything but to run left and right. I must have gone right for 10 to 20 minutes just holding the B button and running along at full speed. After a while, I ran into one or two blind boos in the darkness above, then three or four, and the screen was full of them. They just kind of hung there, doing nothing. They wouldn't chase me if I turned my back, as with the previous blind boo. If I made any noise, like Mario's jump sound, they would just kind of shudder a bit. Like they heard the sound of Mario's movements, but they couldn't do anything about it. Then something made me stop and turn the other way. From what I understand, this story blew up, by the way. I don't know how true that is. Now I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that this map was designed specifically to screw with the player. Not because the giant bleeding bill was hemorrhaging profusely from its face, but because it was inescapable. There was literally no way to avoid it being killed by it, as you can clearly see above. Well, that is, unless you're like me and you have the game Genie Cheats on hand, I switched on the code for permanent invincibility. I let the bleeding bill chase me for a while while I when I was invincible just to get a good look at the thing. I stopped and killed it with my invulnerable touch. Only when I saw a message that hadn't been there when I passed before. I hate you. That kind of creeped me out. But on the other hand, it was kind of interesting because it meant this was definitely a map that was supposed to exist. There was some kind of subplot here, or some sort of plot element here, rather. Something undiscovered. What did it mean? Who hated me? King Koopa seemed the obvious answer. Or maybe just the ghosts. The ghosts. When you're in a haunted castle that you found by way of a haunted ship, a bloody-looking hate message isn't so unbelievable. I saw it again as I approached some giant booze. I was thankful that the blind booze ended at this point, because the more I watched them shudder, the uneasier I felt, almost empathetic toward them, etc. The thankfulness ended when I turned my back on the giant booze, and this happened. Why won't you die? Giant boos with faces I hadn't seen before. They always looked mad at being awakened, angry that you were invading their haunted houses across the Mario World Island. This was different. They looked gleeful, demented. I could see right down their throats, which seemed odd given the lack of detail their mouths usually displayed. And yes, of course I'm going to address that the message, the message you saw in the picture. Why won't you die? I don't know why. Am I supposed to? Who, who's asking? I let the giant booze touch me, and they died like bleeding bills, of which I had encountered two. Despite any attempt to scare the player, I knew that being invincible meant invincible no matter what they threw at me. After a while of running down the strange claustrophobic corridor with no more eventful happenings, I came to a room with an exit pipe. Taking the pipe downward, I came out the other side dropped into a room filled with water. The water made sense, this being a sunken castle beneath a whirlpool and all. I was rewarded for my troubles with a question mark block that released a mushroom for me. I could have easily done this with a cheat code, but the thought had escaped me as I faced all these new and strange sights. The first creatures I encountered in the underwater portion of the castle were thwomps. Unless you've been living under a rock since the mid-80s, you know thwomps are stone-like square creatures that hang from the ceiling and fall whenever you come near. They try to crush you, essentially. Well, these thwomps lined up in a tight row, dropped repeatedly and randomly with no real trigger or any sense of logic. They would just wait or drop whenever they seemed to feel like it. It also looked like these thwomps had been very successful thwomps. Oh my god. more cartoony blood. 
This was getting pretty unusual for the Mario Brothers franchise, which I hadn't recalled seeing blood in at all. Now I'd seen it used three times. The bloody bills, the messages, and these perpetually smashing, grinding thwomps were working their victims, who? Into pulp forever. In the hampering effects of the water, I walked slowly under these things, making sure every single one touched me and died. There were almost 30 of them in a row. The sight of them mindlessly crushed, crushing over and over again just made me hate them with an unsettling intensity. What's weird is that the blood caused Mario to slide as if we were, he were on an ice level. After walking through the gauntlet of depravity, after walking through that gauntlet of depravity, I swam into a more open area that was filled with spikes on the floor and ceiling. It was difficult to swim in this manner without touching the spikes, but since I was still invincible, I didn't think much of it. I avoided them for fu more for fun than out of any sense I'd be damaged. It stopped being fun really fast, though. Now I knew some of what was going on. The bloody mess the thwomps were unendingly spattering. It was other Marios. Past Marios that had tried to traverse this level and failed. I had to admit this was an excellent touch, even if it was a bit ghoulish. Whoever had designed this map actually broke the fourth wall and showed you the bloated, motionless abortions of the player's own careless treatment of Mario's tiny life. Tiny. The bodies only floated straight up and down a little bit, as if to show the effects of a light current. It was genius, and I couldn't believe I might be the first and only person to ever see this. I toyed with the idea of taking more than one screenshot I just presented to you. Basically, so all of you reading this could enjoy the secret map as much as I had. Especially this weird little touch. But... Without swimming, without kicking or moving in any way, the dead Marios started to come at me like torpedoes. Their faces remained blank, blue, and dead. But they moved with astounding speed. They angled and positioned and worked all sorts of unique trajectories that left me almost nowhere to move. They continued coming at me and swarming, backing up and trying again, and I just couldn't bring myself to let them touch me. I moved with more speed and skill than I had ever exerted, frantically trying to keep Mario free of the drowning victims that seemed dead set on rocketing straight into him. When I finally reached the purple exit pipe you see above, there had to be ten of those things right behind, pitching, turning, and chasing me. I entered the pipe as fast as I could. Thankfully, that it worked properly and had Mario out of that situation in a heartbeat. The corridor that followed was empty, thankfully. It was just a blue underwater hallway of sorts with nothing to avoid or kill. It was boring and predictable like the game it had been all these years, which brought back a sense of safety. At the end of the hallway, I came to the standard pair of doors that you enter to face a final boss. Beside the doorway, a mushroom power-up. I didn't touch that shit. Going through the door was as you'd expect. The typical change of map views occurred and Mario was standing on the ubiquitous bridge over boiling lava. Or had it been blood all along? When Mario walked out onto the bridge, however, there was no boss creature. Instead, Mario immediately looked to the side and froze. I couldn't control him anymore. He, he just stood there. Keep looking until you see it. I didn't even see it at first, so I don't expect you to notice it right away. If you still haven't spotted the thing, look in the third window from the left. FYI, that's not usually there. Mario seemed to regain his composure and looked back and forth slowly, surveying the rooms. Sorry, surveying the room. There was still no boss, and I could still not, I still couldn't control him, so I stopped trying and just watched. This went on and on for what seemed like forever. Nothing happened. Then a familiar face walked in from the right. 
dressed in green, tall, and angry. It was Luigi. Mario recoiled in horror. It's difficult to say that without thinking how crazy it sounds, but Mario really reeled back with a sort of terror that was uncharacteristic for such a peppy, happy-go-lucky mascot like him. Then, Luigi spoke. You thought Koopa worked alone? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. It was all connecting now. The messages scrawled on the walls. I hate you. And why won't you die? Luigi. He's always been Mario's second banana. The player, too. The one who doesn't get the princess in the early games. No matter how identical he is to Mario in skill set and ability and tenaciousness and bravery, at the end of the day, the game is Super Mario Brothers, and he's just the brother. How he must have hated Mario. Who among us wouldn't? Think about it. No matter what happens, Mario always comes back. No matter how many corpses he leaves littering the battlefield, he's always there once more to leap and cheer and get all the adoration. And Koopa hadn't worked alone? I didn't know what that meant at first. If anything. But again, you just have to think it through. How exactly does King Koopa consistently succeed in kidnapping the princess? From day one, from the original Mario Brothers onward, it had always been an inside job. Still unable to control the character. I watched Mario simply cower in fear as Luigi leapt high into the air, as high as he could in Mario 2, the bastard child of the franchise. He jumped on the pathetic, weeping Mario again and again and again. I was powerless to stop it. When he was done, he seemed to look at Mario's limp body with this overwhelming rage. Then the bridge started to disappear. Soon, Mario would be dead. As I looked on, I had an irrational thought. Would in be permanent? Within an instant, Luigi, as Luigi turned to seemingly strike a victory pose like he'd been, he'd beaten the level, Mario awkwardly got to his feet and took him by surprise. Fear and sadness and confusion had given way to anger, and Mario overpowered his brother with little effort. To this day, I'm still haunted by the final result of his wrathful reprisal. Oh God, no. There was the map's tile, title, rather. There was the map's title. None of this was a glitch. None of it was a mistake. It wasn't a developer getting back at Nintendo, and it wasn't a ghost haunting a Nintendo cart. It was planned. It was a planned purposeful... I can read. It was a planned purposeful part of the Mario Brothers mythos. If you beat the same level X number of times, a secret path of the world opened, and you learned that from Mario Brothers through Mario Land, Luigi had secretly been working against you, and was in fact facilitating the repeated abduction and abuse of the princess. But why? Money? Power? No. It was all there. Because he couldn't take not being the one in the spotlight, not being Mario himself. After Luigi died, well and truly died, Mario just sat on the edge of the bridge and wept. I was forced to watch this for minutes on end before the screen faded to black. I played the rest of the game through to see if anything changed. Nothing else odd happened, as one would expect, since this whole ordeal was just supposed to be part of the actual full story. 
couldn't access the whirlpool again. I'd seen the events once, and that was all I was apparently allowed. It was back to the game as usual. The same exact game I'd played since the 90s, and would probably continue to play for the rest of my days. Well, it was the same, except for the final image. If only it said, you fucking idiot. So again, apparently this blew up. Uh, I don't know where or how it did, but apparently it did somewhere. Uh, so I was told. Trivia, I Hate You was written as a very early satire of video game creepypastas. The story was posted the same time as Godzilla NES was actively being updated. And multiple fan games have been created. Didn't you play this hack? Uh, Vinny, you played this. I played it a year ago. Wow. Yeah, I guess I did. How about that? The fuck? <laughs> Chat, now you get to watch me play it a year ago a little bit. This is from oh Creepy God, no. Super Mario World Hacks. Sunken Ghost Fallacy. Oh, yeah. Whoa. It's exactly as... Yep, it's exactly that. Wow. Someone said, damn, you really have a dog shit memory. Which is Son, a title drop. Do you really expect me to remember this? When I play, like, Those dozens... are pretty cool. ...of Mario ROM hacks? Yes? All right. Never mind then. Oh, okay. You know what? Um, I'll tell you what I remember. I remember the Mario corpses. Did we go from too difficult to too easy? Yeah, oh my God. It's narrative focused. I don't know why. There's the, the, the shroom. We saw the shroom alone. Detroit. <laughs> Also, this video has a lot of fucking views, which is, I, I did not expect that. Sometimes, you, like, someone, like, reminds me of an old video I did, and I, I look back, I'm like, why is there, why have so many people watched this? Hello, Detroit Plays 1,000 games in one year, yeah. But, uh, I guess I just shouted out the Detroit members. Yeah, you actually do a Luigi battle. Miyamoto and is the Italian Shakespeare confirmed. <laughs> it doesn't play out exactly as I just read it, but um, close enough, man. Oh God, no! You fucking idiot! Always. Luigi's face has been burnt off. Peach is crying and Mario is wrathful. <laughs> well, now, chat, now we have context. Uh, someone said new emote. I I'd be down for an emote of um, that Luigi. The song at the end is Hong Kong 97 slowed down. Do this again in a year. Yeah, I'll just read it or I'll play it. One or the other. But uh, yeah, now you have full context for that. Uh, again, chat. I couldn't tell you how true it is um, or why this blew up, but I was told that blew up. And it's had something to do with that um, that mushroom. Yeah, it's weird. It's very weird. Anyway, uh, it blew up my toilet. Yeah, maybe these things are cyclical too. Sometimes these things like 
you know, they, they get discovered and then they get rediscovered and they become a thing all over again. But I mean, yeah, there is no way that wasn't a satire. I, I tried to give it a legit read as if it wasn't a satire, but the more I read it, it just was making me laugh. So. All right. It blew up because the streamer Vine Sauce played it last year. Again, I have nothing to do with Baldi's Basics. N absolutely nothing. Anyway, chat, thank you for watching um, the Sunday stream and also that weird Mario me reading creepypasta for some reason. If you know of any good Mario creepy games that I might enjoy in a Sunday uh, pack, please let me know. Get in touch with any um, more Mario creepiness. I feel like for some reason people like this stuff, so I'd do one more. Um, especially if I've played it already. Just sub resubmit it. I'll forget. I, I don't know what I've played. No, don't resubmit stuff I've played. All right, chat, I'm going to go. Uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate you. This was a fun Sunday stream. I hope you all have a gr uh, great evening, great morning, night, whenever, whatever. And uh, for those that have subbed, I appreciate it very much. Now that I'm feeling a little bit better, I will continue my streaming as, uh, as planned. And I will also uh, be, be doing just a bunch of random shit. I have a lot of stuff during the week that I'm going to be um, just, again, just random games. Just one-offs, lots of one-offs. And uh, maybe we'll even check out F-Zero again. I'm not sure I'm in the mood, but maybe. Thank you, Mods, for helping out with everything, as always. And uh, yeah, everybody, thank you. Goodbye. Good night. See you next time.